This problem asks us to calculate a 90% confidence interval. The idea is that we've got some population of people we're interested in knowing what proportion of them uh, have kids. We've got a categorical variable where we're looking to say does a person have kids or not and we're looking at what proportion of them do have kids. To find that parameter we began by taking a sample. We took a sample of 500 individuals. We checked to see how many of them had kids. That was 380. And then we calculated a p hat. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's be sure that we've got the given information. The level of confidence for our confidence interval was going to be 90%. It's always good in a script to start out by listing the, the given information and but once we've got that information, we could ask R to find what our p hat is. In many of your written reports, you'll be expected to, to shout out the uh, sample statistic. So let's just run that just to see where it fits. When we run that script, we see that p hat is about 0.76. Now we're going to look at the distribution of this sample statistic p hat. What we mean by that is that we're going to look at every sample of size 500 that could come from the population, calculate this, the uh, p hat, the sample statistic for those, and look at the distribution of all of those uh, p hat. Under appropriate assumptions, that distribution of sample statistics will be normally distributed. And the mean of all those sample of those p hats is going to be this parameter that we were looking for the pop that parameter that we're looking for the population proportion furthermore the standard deviation of this distribution of sample statistics will be the square root of this proportion the population proportion times q if you think of p as the probability of success, q is the probability of failure, or another one, or in other words, one minus p. And so you take p times q divided by n and take its square root. That's the standard deviation of this distribution of sample statistics. Now, of course, we're trying to find out what p is, so we don't know that value, and we, so we can't find q either but we can find our one p hat that we got from our sample. So we'll use this as an approximation for the standard deviation of this distribution. We'll call this the standard error or SE. So we can find that standard error. We'd already calculated p hat. We can find q hat as one minus p hat. And so our standard error will be as this formula says, this now this normal distribution could be converted to a standard normal distribution simply by looking at the z-score of every value up here. What we would like to find is a z-value so that between z and minus z, there's 90% of the overall population. Now, here's how we'll find that z-value. That's called a critical z-value. We'll start by finding the area outside of this confidence region, the area in these two tails. That will be uh, 1 minus the confidence level. We'll call that alpha. Then the area in either one of these tails, they're symmetrical. They're exactly the same size. They're just mere images of each other. And so since alpha was the sum of the two, then the one tail will be alpha divided by two. So we have the machinery built to be able to find out what this z value is. Q norm in R will tell us a, a value on the x or the z axis in this case. If we can tell Q norm what the area is below that particular z value. So we need to find this total area that's below here. There's at least two ways to do that. One, we could take that confidence level, which is 90%, plus that lower tail. That would tell us the z value. We could also take, one, the total area under the curve, 
minus a tail. That would, either, either one of those two calculations would tell us what this area is, and that's what we need to tell Q norm, so that Q norm can tell us what Z is. Now, it might be that in your reports, you'll need to uh, shout out a couple other things. I think you're probably asked to shout out what the standard error is, and you may be expected to shout out what that critical Z value is. Now, Z tells the number of standard deviations you are away from the mean. The Z that we found tells us how to find a Z and a, Z and a minus Z so that 90% of the population is between those two. So if we take that Z value that we've got, which tells the number of standard deviations times SE, which is the standard deviations, that will tell us our margin of error. So we can easily find the margin of error. Once we know the margin of error, then the confidence interval is easy. We'll just take this p hat minus a margin of error. That will tell us the lower bound. p hat plus a margin of error. That will tell us the upper bound. So that completes our script for this particular problem. We would be able to find the lower bound and the upper bound. Let's run that script. Here's the output of our script. Here it's showing what the script was. We took the given values. We calculated the p hat. We shouted out the p hat value. We calculated q hat so that we could find se. We shouted out that standard error. We uh, calculated those tails so that we could use the tails and q norm to help us find that critical value z. Then once we had that critical value, we could find the margin of error, which is the Z value times SE. Uh, we shouted that value out. We calculate the lower bound and upper bound and shouted out the lower bound and upper bound. So just to complete the discussion, I'll type here what you would put in a report for the, for the uh, confidence interval. And so an interval notation the confidence interval would be that amount. You'll remember from your algebra class that that round brackets means that the confidence interval goes from here, from this value, to this value, and everything in between. 